Okay, so let us move towards uh, solving of constraint propagation problems or constraint satisfaction problems. Uh, and as I said, uh, this is going to be an interplay between two kinds of processes. One is search, which will try to find values for variables and the other is propagation, which will try to restrict the values that variables can take essentially. So, let us focus on the, on the propagation part today uh, and we will look at this idea called constraint propagation, which basically at the simplest level uh, says that uh, if, if, if a certain value variable takes certain values, then a related variable can take only some related values and that kind of a thing. And we also use the term consistency enforcement. So, for this you need to revise the notion of consistency and we had said that a partial solution we had used the phrase a bar is consistent if it satisfies all the constraints whose scope is covered essentially or whose scope is a subset of the scope of this uh, partial solution or instantiation A bar essentially. So, if you remember we had tried to draw a small diagram where we said that if we have x 1, x 2, x 3, x 3, x 4, x 5 and so on, let us say x n and we have a partial solution let us say 2, 1, 3, 6. So, we have given values to x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 4 and then if there is any constraint whose scope for example, lies within that or it could be this, this and this. Then, if the if that tuple, for example, x1 and x3 uh, satisfy constraint C1, and if x2, x3, and x4 satisfy constraint C2, which means uh, for C1, 2, comma 3 must be a subset of the relation uh, C1, and 1, comma 3, comma 6 must be a subset of the relation C2 which is associated with C2. Then we say that this that this partial solution is consistent essentially. The idea of constraint propagation is that to allow a partial solution to be extended. So, essentially we are going to be interested in those partial solutions. So, let us say I have a partial solution with 4 variables here x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4. I should be able to extend that partial solution to the fifth variable. That is the general idea of uh, uh, extending uh, uh, of, of maintaining consistency essentially. So, I must not work with uh, an example uh, partial solution where I cannot choose a value for x 5 essentially, because then I am resorting more to search than to propagation essentially. So, we have this notion of I consistency different levels of consistency essentially and I consistency says that a partial solution of I minus 1 variables can be extended to I variables. Now, this is a this is a more general statement than it looks like from the example that I have written on the right. In the, in the example on the right, I have written 
I have kind of assumed that the order in which you extend the solution is uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6. Now, in practice we do not have that constraint, we do not have that restriction. Nobody is saying that after finding values for x1, x2, x3 and x4, it is x5 that you must find the value for. Now, typically of course, algorithms will work in a deterministic manner, so we will end up doing like that. But the notion of I consistency is more general than that. So, in practice of course, our algorithms will be more, more restricted and therefore, we will assume that we are extending them in a predetermined order essentially. So, after x4, I will do x5. That is not a part of the definition of I consistency. So, the simplest case is of one consistency, which by definition says that at the very beginning, if I choose any variable, I will be able to give a value for that. Now, you might ask as to why is this the case essentially, but this may be required in uh, situations where there are constraints, uh, unary constraints or unary relations essentially, which means there is a constraint only on the value of one variable essentially. So, for example, if you are doing map coloring problem and uh, let us say you are saying that I will color the map of India only in this A, B, C 3 colors essentially, whereas the domain may have more than these 3 colors. So, this fact that I have an additional constraint that I am. So, you might say for example, I will only color it white or something like that. And then if my domain has red, blue and white, then it is not one consistent, because I cannot extend my solution to any, val any value from the or to a value from this thing. Anyway, we will come back to that in a moment. This is called node consistency. And, and implementing node consistency essentially says that you prune values which do not satisfy some constraint essentially. So, for example, if some color is disallowed, you remove it from the domain of that value essentially. Anyway, so that is a very simple kind of a thing. What is more interesting is to consistency and that is what we are going to look at today. It is also called arc consistency. And this says that if I choose a value for one variable, then I should be able to choose a value for the second variable, a second variable, which means any second variable essentially. And we say that uh, if that is the case, then we say that the network is arc consistent. So, let us look at some. Uh, so, why are we interested in this? Because if we are allowed to choose only, if we have enforced to consistency on a network, and we will see today how to do that. Then it means that you give a value for the first variable and you are sure that you will be able to give a value for the second variable. You do not have to backtrack at that stage essentially. And then of course, you have 1, then 2, then 3 and so on, higher and higher orders of consistency. So, 5 consistency means that 4 variables can be extended to 5 variables essentially. And I consistency or n consistency would mean that if you have a partial solution of n minus 1 variables, you will always find a value for the nth variable essentially. And you can see that the higher the level of consistency, the less the amount of backtracking you will have to do, because essentially consistency is saying that you will be able to find a value for the next variable essentially. So, let us look at our consistency in a little bit more detail. So, we say that a network, so let us begin with a variable first. We say that a relation or an edge R, R is a relation R x y is R consistent. If x is where x is x is a variable, so let me use lower case not to confuse with the other things r x y. 
if variable x is so we will use a short form a c here. So, a, a, a variable x is a c with respect to variable y and vice versa. Then to define this we say that for every value a belongs to the domain of x that we can choose well, basically you can choose any value from a domain but I, so that's kind of a redundant statement i'm making here but the, that we can choose this from the algorithm point of view so if we choose any value of a from the domain of x for x So, when I say this, it means x equal to a, there exists a value b which belongs to the domain of y such that the pair a comma b belongs to r x y. So, if this is the case, then we say that a variable x is r consistent with respect to a variable y essentially. If y is also r consistent with respect to x, then we say that the relation r x y is, is uh, r consistent. And then finally, we say that a network is a c if all pairs of variables are A C. So, we first define over an edge this consistency in one direction then in the other direction and then we are saying over all edges. Okay. So, you must not confuse with the fact that when I say all pairs it is equivalent to saying all edges because if you are talking as you remember if you are talking about a binary constraint network if you do not have an edge between two uh, variables or two nodes, it basically signifies the universal relation essentially. And when it is a universal relation, then of course, you can choose any value from one and any value from another essentially. So, to, to, to just look at an example, uh, if we have x and y and z, and you have a value here and you have a value there and you have a value here and you have another value here and you have a value here which is does not have a value in y. Then you can see that in this example at this stage x is r consistent with respect x is sorry x is not r consistent with respect to y because there is a value the third dot which I let me color it here, the colored element does not have a corresponding value in y and, but y is r consistent with respect to x essentially. So, that is the definition part of it and uh, if we think of uh, z as a universal relation that means implicitly everything is related to everything else. If you have not specified a constraint, it means that you are allowing, allowing any combination and therefore, that is by definition r consistent essentially. So, you can see that this network is not r consistent, uh, y is r consistent with respect to z and, and z is r consistent with respect to y. So, the edge y z is r consistent, but the edge x y is not r consistent because x is not r consistent with respect to y. And basically, consistency and enforcement will involve removing values from domains of variables 
so that it becomes our consistent, which basically means that if these three values were called a, b and c, then a search algorithm should not start with value x equal to c, because then it will not find a consistent value in y essentially. So, we want to avoid that kind of dead end in search and that is the whole idea of, of, of doing arc consistency. So, how do we go around doing this? Uh, we, we start by making a variable arc consistent and that is done by an algorithm which traditionally everybody calls as revise. And one way of saying this is that you are revising x with respect to y. So, just the way you are defining this function or, uh, or module or sub program or whatever you want to call it. And, but I prefer to use this notation d x d y or x y essentially. Okay. Essentially in both the cases it is just a different notation, you are trying to prune the domain of variable x which is indicated here with the within brackets and that is the first notation is used in linear director's book, the second not notation is used in my book, but essentially the algorithms are still the same essentially. So, what this revise and that is the core of this algorithm for doing arc consistency which is called A C 1 we will see shortly. The core of that algorithm is this module called revise and what revise does is that it prunes the domain of x so that it has only consistent values with respect to y. So, as you can imagine this is a simple algorithm and we can uh, write is as follows. So, for each a i belonging to d x or I can just say for each a belonging to d x if there is no, so I am just writing it in vector style in a high level v belonging to d y such that a b belonging to r x y then delete a from d x. It is a very simple algorithm. And we can sort of illustrate it by this. So, supposing I have some constraint. So, this is related to this, this is related to this and let us say this is related to this. Then if I make a call revise, so let us say this is x and this is y, uh, d x d y r x y. Then if you call these values a, b, c and d, this will delete c from d x. So, it basically means that this value will get deleted from the domain and so the new d x will be. So, a, b and d only. There is one call that I have made to revise x with respect to y and that is deleted one value from the domain of x. Likewise, if I call revise y with respect to x, then it will delete three values as, as you can see from there. So, let us call them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, revise uh, y with respect to x will delete the values 2, 4 and 5 from here essentially and then the edge x, y will become r consistent essentially. So, what is the complexity?
in the worst case what will you end up doing? So, for checking that there is no this thing you may have to look at k values in the domain. Supposing in the worst case what is the situation uh, x has k values and y has k values. So, whenever we are doing complexity analysis we will assume that every node has k every variable has k values. In the worst case x has k values and y has k values and let us say the, the it is an empty relation which means there are no consistent pairs allowed essentially that is the worst case situation. So, what will you do you look at the first value for x then you will look at all the k values for y and then you will remove that value for x. Then you will look at the second value for x look at all the k values for y and remove that value. So, in the worst case you will look at k square entries. So, the complexity of revise is order k square. So, this is something we will always use uh, n variables whenever we talk about complexity and k values. So, our complexity will always be in terms of n variables k values. Sometimes we will use the notion count of number of edges in the binary constraint network essentially, but not in this particular example. So, in the worst case it is it is this. In the best case uh, for every value you, you look at you will the first value you look at on the other side will be uh, a related value. So, you will only look at k values uh, for this, thing. but generally we talk about worst case uh, complexity. Another way of expressing this whole algorithm is to say that we are doing this operation that the domain of x gets the following. So, we can express the whole algorithm in terms of one relational uh, statement is that you are taking the join of the relation x r x y with the domain of y and then from that you are taking the value for x essentially. And so, whichever values in the original domain were there uh, only you are keeping only those uh, where the join returns a value the projection and the join returns a value. Okay. So, now let us talk about uh, making a network arc consistent and the first algorithm that we will see is called A C 1 it is a very commonly known algorithm and before we do that uh, let us uh, try to work at an example. Uh, this example is uh, very similar to what we have been looking at. So, let us say we have this three this thing and let us say we have four or five values in each domain. So, this is a matching diagram if you remember that I am drawing and let us say this is how it looks. So, let us call these variables x, y and z. What do I need to make this whole network are consistent? Obviously, I want to revise x with respect to y, I want to revise y with respect to x then and we will do this only for the for the relations which are explicit. So, R x y is explicit and R y z is explicit. So, R x z anything is allowed. So, we do not need to do there essentially. So, we need to do y with respect to 
z and z this is equal to y. So, this we can write as follows that for each pair x i x j that participates in a constraint which is equivalent to saying that there is an edge. We have to make two calls to revise, right. One is uh, revise d, I will just use d i and I hope the context makes it clear d j. We will use the same relation R i j, okay, because that's that basically contains both ways. Uh, this thing. So we'll not go into the nitty gritty of how we represent this relation here. So essentially, we want to make two calls essentially. So for each pair of variables, so for x y we will make these two calls, and for y z we will make these two calls, because by definition of this thing, we have to first make each variable R consistent with respect to the other variable in both directions and then we have to do it for all possible pairs of variables. So, that is a that is a basic thing that we have to do. The question is I want to ask you is that enough essentially. If I if I do this what have I written on, on the left hand side as an algorithm that for each pair. So, the, what I have written on the right hand side call x with respect to y, y with respect to x, y with respect to z and z with respect to y. Will I get a network which is R consistent? So, let us work it out. Uh, in the first cycle, so let me say I put a tick mark here, I will do x with respect to y. So, I will end up deleting this. Right? Then I will do y with respect to x. Then I will end up deleting this value because there is nothing related in x here and this value. So, two values have gone. So, whatever I have circled are deleted, no longer existing. Now, when I do y with respect to z, so for this the first value has a value in the, this thing, the second has a value, the third has a value and the fourth has a value also, but the fifth one does not have a value. So, let me use a square here to denote the fact. So, this is squares and, and, and these are the circles I am doing here. So, y has gone from there. Then I do z with respect to y, the first has a value, the second has a value the second has a value, no the first does not have a value because this has been deleted already. The second has a value which is the first value, the third has a value, uh, this does not have a value and this does not have a value. So, I will end up deleting these three variables, but if I delete these variables then what have I done? Uh, is my network. So, if I rub this off, will, will I have a network which is R consistent? So, let me just draw that again. I have three values here, I have two values here and I have two values here. Uh, this goes to this and to the first value, the second one goes to the second value. and it goes to the second value there and the third one goes to the second value. Okay, so, it turns out that in this case it has become art consistent. So, I have not chosen a good example, but you can see that, that when we delete some values then you may be actually disrupting the consistency of some other variable essentially. So, maybe in the next class I will, I will choose an example where this does not really happen uh, and then we will see that we need to put this in a loop essentially and the condition for that is till 
no domain changes any further. So, we will take this up, we will take up another example in the next class and we will just try to see that just one round of revisions is not enough or one round of revised calls enough and we have to make multiple rounds. So, we will make a case for this and then we will talk about efficiency after this. Okay, so, we will do that in the next class. Okay.